This is a love story. A tale of one couple and their unbreakable bond with 104 horses. I must say, in all honesty, I mean, I would have given it up long ago. I can only say it's Pat's fortitude and absolute dedication to those animals. You know, he'd crossed the line, and when you've crossed it, you've got to follow it up. I would definitely say we might have saved the horses, but they've certainly saved us in the end. Theirs is a story that weaves through three African countries. A life-changing journey that has brought them and their beloved animals to a new land they now call home. This is Mozambique. This is Inside Africa. Golden light and lush green vegetation swathe the landscape in Vilanculo, on the edge of Mozambique, as a herd of horses graze in the early morning sun. Although now blissfully blended into the land around them, their story, like the Retzlaffs, began elsewhere. It was in South Africa in 1976 when Pat and Mandy first met. I met Pat when he was at university in Peter Maritzburg. They had a, a charity float in Maritzburg and um, I was on the float and we had a mutual friend called Charlie Bender and apparently Pat and Charlie were walking down the, uh, the road uh, following the float and then Pat looked at me and he said to Charlie, that's the girl I'm going to marry. Both had grown up in Africa, Mandy in Ghana and South Africa and Pat in Tanzania and what was then known as Rhodesia. As a young married couple, they moved back to Rhodesia just before independence and the birth of Zimbabwe. There they farmed crops like tomatoes and raised their three children alongside a handful of much-loved horses. My passion for horses, uh, I think that probably started before I was born. It's in my genes, I think. I didn't do much riding until I met Pat. So that's when, when my riding uh, started again. But Pat's ridden all his life and he comes from a long line of you know, horse breeders, horse lovers. But life for their family on the farm changed forever in August 2001. Zimbabwe's president warns white landowners to leave their farms. But As part of then leader divine. Robert Mugabe's land redistribution plan, many white Zimbabweans were pushed off their land, sometimes violently. 46 years, now we're running. Now we're running. There is some conflict, some fighting with the white farmers. You really just didn't know what way it was going to go. And because, you know, so many sort of friends of ours had been killed, um, it, it was frightening, it, it totally frightening. While many farmers fled the country, seeking safety abroad, Pat and Mandy remained in Zimbabwe and took in the animals that were left behind. The idea with the horses at the beginning was, uh, this is temporary. You know, all these horses are being slaughtered. Let's take some in so we can give them back when things uh, get to normality, which it never, unfortunately, never did. I just think Pat wanted to rescue them, really, and uh, he'd think about what he was going to do with them afterwards. I kept on saying to Pat, what are you going to do? What are we going to do with all these horses? Horses, uh, you bond with horses. People bond with horses. And once that bond is has become firm, it's very difficult just to uh, discard the animal. The alternative was to put them all down. There was nothing else we could do. As the land invasions progressed, the Retzlaffs found themselves caring for a team of over 300 horses. We actually had six evictions. It got worse when we had more horses because obviously, you know, you had to think, uh, you know, of, of, of getting these animals um, out. When they began to run out of grazing space for the animals, Pat and Mandy had to make a decision to remain in Zimbabwe or move elsewhere in search of a better life. We didn't have any money coming in at that stage. We had to uh, survive. 
we nearly had 300 horses and we said well these horses have got to earn money for themselves and that's when we had to uh, make a plan of getting them somewhere and obviously tourism was the was the thing at the time. Our possibilities were Tanzania uh, and Botswana and Mozambique and I just made a decision after six months or so of studying all these databases which were all there was to come into Mozambique and that was because there was no competition here. Penniless but optimistic, they took 104 of the youngest and fittest horses with them and rehomed the others. Having transported each of their horses safely across the border into Mozambique, Pat left Mandy temporarily with most of the herd to see if their life could begin fresh further down the coast. Pat put seven horses in a truck and he headed to Villanculo and he thought Villanculo has an international airport. I can do something along this beach because we had thought about doing horse safaris along the beach um, in Mozambique, but uh, it was a lot more difficult than anybody ever uh, envisaged. Little did they realize the farm animals so familiar to them were alien to the locals of Villanculo. Well, they'd never knew what horses were, so it was a, a mixture of fascination and fear. They saw the horses as big dogs with big teeth. The women would have their baskets of fish and, you know, we'd come along the beach and the next minute the baskets were discarded and everybody would run into the bushes and, you know, Pat and I realised that, you know, it, it, it was a problem. As day breaks, Lucas Simeon Mangi inspects the horses he's come to love. Every day, I come to check the horses in the morning. If there's no problem, I start mixing the horse ration and give it to the horses to eat. Ten years ago, he was the first and only Mozambican to work with the horses that Pat and Mandy Retzlaff brought with them when they moved here from Zimbabwe. Before they arrived, I had only seen horses on television. I had never seen any with my own eyes before. When the horses came here, many people were scared and disdainful of them. They would never knew what horses were, so it was a, a mixture of fascination and fear. When the first horses arrived, we had 5,000 people following, and the police had to come. and. Uh, moved them off the road and everything. Literally, 5,000 people were following the horses down the road. Integrating these large animals into the community proved to be an even bigger challenge when the horses set their eyes on tastier pastures. Horses escape and then they would eat somebody's maize and, you know, we'd have all the villagers sort of outside demanding compensation. As Lucas was the only one who could speak the same language as the locals, he soon had to get involved. I was the only one talking to those people, explaining that the horse owners are also our fellow friends and we shouldn't speak badly of them. Because of that, they decided I was the person to deal with the community problems and the horses. Once an open dialogue between Pat, Mandy and the locals was established, the couple were able to start building their horse safari business. We have a seven night, eight day safari and a four night, um, five day safari. Our first guests, um, they loved it so much. Um, I think it was, they, they really said it was just far more than they had ever expected. So I think that was very reassuring to us that we were offering something that was marketable to, to the horse riding community out there. But the issue of grazing was still a concern. With so many mouths to feed, the herd was taken to a lake nearby. Yet unbeknownst to Pat and Mandy, an unassuming poisonous plant with a beautiful yellow flower was growing around the lake. 30 of the horses from Zimbabwe died in a matter of days. That was a disaster. 
uh, because they were such wonderful horses and like I say, you get so attached to them. Whenever you move animals to a new environment, they don't know what the plants are, etc., etc. So anyway, they ate this poisonous plant, uh, Crotillaria dura, and uh, we lost 30 horses. It was possibly the worst time we have ever been through because these horses, you know, they know us so well, they, they knew something was wrong and they actually died in our arms. I mean, Pat and I spent uh, days with, the, with these horses trying to, to comfort them. Some of these horses we were so close to. Um, it, it, it was just absolutely one of the worst things we've ever been through. In spite of all the challenges they had to overcome to start their new life in Mozambique, Pat, Mandy and the remaining horses have survived and indeed thrived in the area. The horses are amazing because they came from uh, uh, Zimbabwe, which is a relatively high country, a cool country, and we brought them into this heat Anyway, when I first brought the horses down here, uh, they were drinking 80 litres of water a day. It's quite incredible, and just sweating. And by the next year, uh, they weren't drinking even 20 litres. And now we ride them for a 50 kilometre ride and offer them water, you know, thinking, gosh, you must be totally... And they turn their nose up at the water. So horses are amazing at adapting to, to new environments. Some have even formed special relationships with grooms like Lucas. Yeah, I watched one today, Caval Shimad Brutus. I really like Brutus. He was the one who created a lot of problems before. But now he's calm. We've become friends. As the community have gradually become more familiar with the horses and the safari business has grown, many locals have found employment working alongside the creatures they were once fearful of. Little by little, things are changing, and I see lots of people from the community asking for jobs. Before, I was the only Mozambican working here. Here in the stables, we have 30 or more Mozambicans that work here, that can sustain their families. If there were no horses, there would be no jobs. To ensure everyone is comfortable with the animals, Pat and Mandy also offer riding lessons to the children who live in the area. We teach most of the kids in the community. Uh, some of them are much older now, so they've gone on to boarding schools and things, so we don't have as many as we used to do. Uh, we have uh, this group that we've just taught now, and then we have some two, three and four year olds that come pretty regularly and uh, they're all learning to ride. But we've taught a lot of people in Villanculo to ride. I think there's a bond between horses and, and children, but I think you learn a lot from horse riding. Most Mozambicans are a, a, a little scared of horses, so they, they, you know, their kids probably are as well, but you know, more and more are, are, are coming in and, and learning how to ride. And, and, and that's the commitment Pat and I have made. With time, the rescued horses from Zimbabwe have adapted to their new life, new surroundings, and new neighbors on this strip along Mozambique's coast. And as a result, Pat and Mandy have been able to extend their horse safari business beyond the mainland to the beautiful islands nearby. There's a lot of challenges keeping horses on an island. <laughs> um, logistics, you know, getting, there's nothing in this country really set up for horses, let alone on this island. So everything has to come in from the mainland and a lot of planning and coordination. Fourteen kilometers off the coast of Vilanculo in Mozambique, lies the unspoiled island of Benguera. Situated in a marine national park, its pristine beaches and cobalt blue waters invite visitors to enjoy an idyllic escape. And it's here where a handful of Pat and Manny Retzlaff's horses are now based. 
While most of the horses they moved from Zimbabwe still live on the mainland, the couple were enticed by these sandy shores. We've got six left on the island, four of which are the original Zimbabwe horses that Pat and Mandy brought across, and two of which we've more recently rescued from Mozambique. Having dreamed about starting a horse safari when they first arrived just over 10 years ago, Pat and Mandy are now able to maximize the stunning views and scenery. We're very lucky here. We haven't got the competition. We try and you know, run a really high quality business. When you're on a horse, you're a little bit higher up and the views just become more stunning. And of course, you can get to places where you, you couldn't walk to or a boat couldn't get to. With a combination of wild coastline and quiet bays, riders from the horse safari, as well as holidaymakers already staying on the island, are able to make use of the unique environment. We offer two main activities, the swimming with the horses, which is a bareback beach ride, and then we take the horses into the ocean, which is just such an incredible experience for the guests. And then we have the beautiful outrides in the saddle where we can explore. There's 30 kilometers of beaches and 2,500 hectares of island to ride on. In 2017, almost 10,000 tourists visited the islands in the archipelago, and the horses provide an avenue through which to explore the landscape. I think they've improved some aspects of tourism. You know, as is one of the only activities that we can offer on land and show the guests the island. You know, the rest of the, the activities are on the reef and on the water, so I think that's been really great for tourism. The horses love island life. You know, their work and exercise is important and their schooling and training, but they also get a lot of playtime on the beach, relaxing time, grazing. You know, there's no fences on the island, so they have free range, really. Back on the mainland, the quintessential beach life continues for the rest of the horses, with a ride to a local fishing village. When the couple first arrived, Mandy was encouraged to visit the late chief of the village, Eric, to talk about how the entire community could benefit from the horses. So we got um, a group of people and we went out to the village and um, Eric's wives, um, well, the, the wives used to do the food then. And uh, so we ate matapa and all the traditional food and crab. And the guests just absolutely loved it. And, um, and the kids kept on coming up to see what we were doing. And that's basically how, how it started. Today, the tradition continues with food still prepared by Eric's wife, Olinda Joaquin who distinctly remembers her first impression of the animals. I was a bit scared of the horses at the beginning, but now, with time, I've got used to the horses, and I'm not scared anymore. I'm really happy with this work because it's what sustains our lives. On the days the horses come here, we are able to make an income. More than a decade after arriving, Pat, Mandy and the horses have become part of the fabric of this coastal community. Suleiman Amuji, who was the local mayor when the Red Stars first arrived, has witnessed the change over time. Not only in mainland, even in the islands, we know uh, now we, we can see the community, uh, they understand better the horses, they get the job for that thing, and they also now know how to... to, to, to to use the horses, how to work with the tourism with the horses. So I think Mandy did a, a great, great uh, work. And, and I, I believe she teach a lot uh, at the community how to, to, to live with the horses. You guys are great. I think they're all very tolerant now. I found now that if a horse escapes, then the villagers shout, horse, horse, or cavallo, cavallo, and, you know, and then they, they alert everybody. I think we have a good relationship with our uh, community. I'd like to think so anyway, um, I, but I, I, I feel they've got used to us now, and, and they're all very um, helpful. 
Of the 104 original horses that journeyed from Zimbabwe to Mozambique, 16 remain. But the memory of those lost lives on in a book written by Mandy. Well, I think they've saved us in the end, haven't they? They've given us a completely different um, life. And a life, you, you know, that um, probably one could only really imagine. You get touched by Mozambique, you know, and I wouldn't want to live anywhere else in the world. I honestly have stopped my horse at times and it's taken my breath away. It, it, it really has. So I think we're very, very privileged to be here and that's thanks to the horses. If you speak to anyone in the horse industry, they'll tell you you're mad if you make money out of horses. You'll never make money out of horses. It's the bond it's this uh, that keeps you going. We're not going to become millionaires with, uh, with our horses, that's for sure. But it's a wonderful, wonderful thing to do and to be involved with. We're very lucky. Life took an unexpected turn for Pat and Mandy. But despite facing incredible challenges and an entirely new life, theirs is a story of hope change and an unbreakable bond. A powerful bond not only between man and horse, but also between two people who refuse to give up. Pat's carried us through it. Um, you know, I would have fallen in a heap long ago, but somehow he gets you to rise to the occasion. I think he's just the most positive person on the planet and he just doesn't see sort of obstacles, you know, he just doesn't see them in his way. He just sort of marches forward and I guess we just march behind him. I'm the crazy one, you might uh, say, but I loved animals and we got involved in it um, because of the politics and Mandy supported me the whole time, which is, she could have uh, dropped it and left and done all, but 100% support, which is amazing. Mm -hmm.